And House of Bush in Bev wants to raise about $122 million in its bid to buy a stake of uh, SAB Miller. Earlier, Dutch brewer Heineken turned down a takeover offer by SAB Miller, saying it wants to remain independent. Well, joining me now from London to discuss this and so much more in the beverage industry is Jasper Lawler, market analyst at CMC Markets. Good to have you with us, Jasper. Maybe let's pick up on the Heineken SAB Miller story. Uh, very interesting mix because Heineken making it very clear that they want to remain independent. From an SAB perspective, many people saying that uh, had the partnership taken place, it just wouldn't make sense. Do you agree? Hi, yes. Good afternoon from London. I do tend to agree. I think the, the motivation for the deal speaks a lot to um, how well it could be put together. Really, the motivation, is, as I see it, is a defensive play, um, uh, more like along the lines of uh, a good offense is a good defense. And there is this, the prospect of AB InVev um, investing into SAB Miller. And this is really their way of trying to protect themselves from a possible acquisition. So when your motivation for the merger is defending from another acquisition, that doesn't necessarily tie in to good uh, synchronicity between you and your potential takeover prospect. Isn't that interesting? Because many people say that while there aren't any synergies between Heineken and SAB, but there could be potential further synergies between AB and Bev as well as SAB Miller. So it does seem as though it's a tricky one for management to highlight. Absolutely. And obviously in every deal, management have um, kind of two sets of objectives. One is to do the best by the shareholders and uh, create the most value for their company, be it through a merger or through in their own right. But obviously they want to maintain the control as best they can over their own uh, positions and careers. And that's why oftentimes you do get a few back and forths before a deal can be combined and can be agreed upon in terms and conditions ironed out. So that's why we've seen a, a lot of M&A activity this year, but very rarely on the first attempt, uh, on the first bid, uh, does an offer get accepted. So that's why I think even with the, the Heineken deal, um, it's not to say that it's completely done at this point. I, I, I do feel that SAB Miller may come back, especially if this financing, which has been denied, does prove to be true. You know, there'll be an, an extra rush to, to try and get a deal done. When do you think the time for consolidation then might come? Does it depend on the market and the positioning at the time, the valuation of the deal, or uh, a new opportunities that have sprung up from the companies that are in pursuit? Um, yeah, it does tend to be when um, you know the, an acquiring company obviously has to look to good uh, M&A type conditions, and it's been a good year for it so far. Um, but the other thing is that they obviously want the, the best value for the, for the company, and so that's why often uh, companies will swoop in at a time when the company's results have, have been a bit more lackluster. And so um, there's increasing competition, and downwards price pressure on, on beverages across the world, and that's why you're seeing this kind of consolidation. So that is affecting some of the industry profits, um, even though generally considered quite a good kind of defensive sector for investors to play at, it's becoming increasingly fierce competition just because of the global nature of the way these companies are able to compete with each other. So th when you see that slight drop in profits in one of the companies, that just makes them that more susceptible to, a, to, a, to an acquisition. Mm. Looking at recent reports, Anne Hauser Bush has made it very clear that they're not in active discussions to acquire SAB Miller, that being published uh, in some uh, Reuters or other uh, wire services today. But uh, maybe if you could paint a picture for us, uh, potential synergy between Anne Hauser as well as SAB, how big exactly would this company be? It would be the biggest. Um, right now they stand at number one and two in terms of largest uh, beverage producers in the world. And so it would be substantial. Um, the one thing you have to consider there, and something that might be of benefit to, to SAB Miller in their defense of against trying to become an uh, maintain as an independent company, is that r regulators will tend to step in here. Um, normally, US regulators and European regulators tend to be some of the most strict enfor strictly enforced. So this will obviously be a kind of global deal. So it will be interesting as to how many different factions will come in and intervene and have an opinion on this. But that. Putting the two largest together um, could, could certainly bring in um, some regulatory problems. And that's why I think possibly what might happen is you may see some divestments from, um, from AB InBev or possibly SAB Miller. And that's why part of the reason why you're seeing some of these other 
uh, beverage companies do well today is they may benefit from some of those divestments and become bigger companies themselves and the whole sector could benefit from a kind of general asset swap. Mm. Just to close off with your general overview, Jasper, of the sector, people drink in the good times, they drink in the bad. Does it mean that uh, these beverage companies are probably uh, uh, set and very defensive against uh, property potential profit losses? Absolutely. I mean, at the moment, stock markets globally are at um, all-time highs in the US and, and close to all-time highs in the UK and, and Europe. And so now, maybe not the best time to be defensive, but should fears that we're seeing come creeping into the markets this, this week um, of a more hawkish Fed and a, and a raise in interest rates at the end of the quantitative easing program in the US at least, although perhaps there might be some in Europe, you know, should those uh, fears translate into lower stock prices and a, and a larger correction than we've seen so far this year, which all the corrections have been very narrow, that kind of more uh, fear-based market trading, then that's when you, uh, you would want to look towards some of these more defensive sectors. Thank you so much for uh, updating us today. Just looking at the SAB Miller share price here from a JSC perspective, it's up by 8%. So no doubt seeing some interesting share uh, polder movement there. But that was uh, Jasper Lawler, market analyst at CMC Markets. Thanks for joining us.